Science on the Menu, a podcast by the European Food Safety Authority. Can you believe how time flies? The end of the year festivities are just around the corner. And for many of us across Europe, we know what this means, right? That we are ready to prepare and savor the finest traditional dishes with our friends and loved ones. I hope our listener will bring home joyful memories, maybe a slice or even two of dessert, but definitely not put poisoning as an unwanted present. And that is why in this episode, we will discuss the risks linked to food contamination and how to make sure that the delicious dishes that you share with your family and friends are also safe. Hi everyone and welcome to Science on the Menu, the podcast discussing the science behind safe food. I am Barbara, head of the digital publishing team at EFSA, and I'm your host for today. In this episode, we will discuss some of the most common diseases that we can unfortunately get from food and how to stay safe. With me today is Valentina Rizzi, head of EFSA's biological monitoring team. Benvenuta Valentina. Thank you very much for inviting me. We're happy to have you. I really wanted to ask you, as a first question, a slightly more personal one. What is the favorite part of your job? My favorite part is to deal with science first, <laughs> to do the scientific part and not the administrative. But what I really like is to have the opportunity to speak to many, many experts from all other countries, from all around the Europe, European Union, but also outside, because this is a, the occasion to learn from other people, not only scientific subject, but also different point of view and different uh, experience. Thank you, Valentina. And uh, we said your team is the EFSA's biological monitoring team. Can you help us understand a little bit more in practice what it does? This team uh, is focused on biological monitoring activities. This means, in principle, collection analysis of data regarding biological hazard, but in principle, zoonosis uh, agents. Uh, there are a lot of uh, microbiological agents that can cause infection and diseases in humans. And the transmission between humans, animal and humans, these diseases are called zoonosis because there is the possibility of exchange between animal and humans. And we are collecting from all member states this data. We analyze and we publish every year an annual report together with the CDC, so including data from humans, animal and food, to give an overview at European Union level about the presence of this zoonotic agent along the entire food chain. Wow, it's quite an important and impressive job. So congratulations. And just for our listeners, can you tell them what ECDC is? ECDC is the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control with the agency, European agency working on the public health side, collecting human data. And uh, together with EFSA, other agencies collaborate, uh, with, support the commission in many activities. Thank you, because, you know, we have all of this jargon we are used to, but then not everybody knows. And uh, EFSA indeed collaborates with many other agencies, which is a great uh, part of our job. And um, do you have any particular example of one, uh, you know, a disease that spread from a human, from an animal to a human that uh, was really important? I think probably the most known, I would say, Salmonella. Many people uh, are aware of salmonellosis, which is the disease in humans that can co be caused by many food. For example, eggs, which is probably the most relevant if cooked, if consumed raw or undercooked, but could, could be caused also by consumption of poultry, chicken and turkey meat. But there are also other diseases, maybe another important, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of severity is listeriosis, because the number of cases are much lower in the European Union. But this disease has a fatality rate much higher than salmonellosis and other diseases. Okay. And where can you get it from? This, uh, you can get this from fish, mainly at least from fish and fish oil product and also meat product. So products that are ready to eat, ready to be consumed. 
speaking about prosciutto, smoked salmon. Uh, so it's really important also because this pathogen, Listeria, has the ability to grow at the refrigerator temperature. So at the temperature also close to the five Celsius degree, which is not the case for other pathogens. So it's very important in this case to not avoid consuming the food beyond the expiry date, for example. Okay, even if it was in the fridge. Uh, yeah, because the more time they stay in the fridge, the more yeah. possibility has the pathogen to grow. Okay. And um, so you mentioned uh, salmon and meat, but are there other foods that could cause foodborne diseases? There are some that are more frequently involved, but in the recently, for example, until some years ago, we didn't consider much the food of known animal origin. But recently there were very ex many examples that the vegetables and fruit can be responsible for foodborne diseases. One was uh, in 2018 when there was a big outbreak in the European Union co caused by frozen corn and other vegetables. And in this case, it was Listeria. That were not many cases in five countries, but uh, the proportion of that was quite high. Oh, wow. Frozen was, corn. Frozen corn. And also there are fruits, for example, berries are very frequently involved. I remember that because I uh, often do smoothies with fruits and frozen berries. And I remember there were quite a few occasions where there were alerts about that. So. Okay, so we need to be careful also for fruits and vegetables. And what about raw food um, or raw vegetables and raw fruits? In general, when you decide to eat raw or undercooked food, it's very important for first to buy fresh product and to keep uh, the temperature, right temperature, which is in general in the refrigerator, and then to avoid the parts, the areas that are damaged. And uh, in case of uh, vegetables, it's very important to wash them with uh, running and clean water. And someone that I know told me that it's important to wash them even if you don't eat the peel, right? And right. <laughs> when you cut, uh, for example, the, the fruit uh, with the uh, knife, you can uh, bring the contamination from the uh, exterior part, external part of the fruit to the internal. So it's better to clean the surface to avoid this contamination. And what does EFSA um, do? What, what is the role of EFSA in, uh, you know, ensuring food safety and uh, especially in the case of foodborne diseases? In this case, we have been uh, requested uh, by the Commission to intervene when there are, there are foodborne outbreaks involving more than two countries. should be a multi-country event because if it is a national event, it is only the country and the competent authority in that country to take care of the event. In case it, it is multi-country, both the European Commission or the European Center for Disease Control and Prevention can request EFSA to intervene. And in this case, our role in principle is to evaluate all information regarding the food, the suspected food, to, to try to identify if there are analytical results, so positive results for the specific pathogen, and also to understand where the food is coming from or when it was distributed in order to try to identify where was the point of contamination, for example, in the processing plant, and try to implement control measure to avoid contamination of further, uh, further additional uh, batches product. Okay, and um, can you make an example? What was one of the most recent cases that you had to deal with as EFSA? The most recent was uh, this year during in the Easter period, unfortunately, mm. because it was a salmonella event linked to chocolate. In this case, the, the, the event started at the, at the end of the previous year in December, but uh, was not clear the source of the, inf the infection. And only later in April, we were uh, requested to, 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 pr to contribute to the, this assessment together with the CDC. And uh, unfortunately, it was linked to chocolate product. And once uh, the, 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 the company, the pro production company was identified, there was the intervention of the different uh, competent authorities in the involved countries to stop the distribution of the product and recall the product from the market, from the consumers. And our role was really to identify 
the contaminated food uh, that was uh, linked to the human cases, the patients. Okay, it's really unfortunate it happened over Easter. And uh, it's great, though, that EFSA intervened and, uh, you know, we, we have this in the system in place that many people don't even uh, know about. Uh, so it's good that we spread the word about what we do. And on a more personal side, uh, you know, we're approaching Christmas and uh, everybody has their favorite uh, family traditions. What is the uh, dish that you're especially looking for? Uh, for Christmas. I'm looking for tortellini in broth <laughs> made by my mother, which is a, a pasta, fresh pasta um, filled, uh, filled uh, with um, meat, pro meat uh, mix of meat uh, and also with eggs. Uh, I don't remember what else. Parmigiano. Parmigiano. <laughs> But also I look for another dish prepared by my mother-in-law, torta fritta. I have to intervene. In Reggio Emilia, where I am from, we call it gnocco frit, and we have a big fight. <laughs> no, but my husband is coming from Bologna. They call it <laughs> Crescentina. Crescentina, so three ways of naming the same thing. But I know what you mean. It's very uh, yummy. We are unfortunately now at the end of our episode, Valentina, but thank you so much for your time with us. It has been a real pleasure chatting with you. Goodbye. We hope our listeners have received some useful information that would allow them to spend joyous but especially safe holidays, no matter how they are going to celebrate. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Science on the Menu. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. Next time... We will discuss insect foods together with our colleague Ermolaus, who is part of EFSA's novel food team. Happy holiday season filled with joy and safe food to all of you.